And then you've got a well of a mess in the morning. You have to cut off half of it to get it going. And wow. So, so you want to roll it back and you want to tape it so that it stays taped down evenly all the way across. Gotcha. Then the way when you start in the morning, you don't have this. Because anywhere that wave is under past that vacuum, it's going to leave a smear mark. Okay. Sometimes if it's really bad, I'll cut that off. And I think I'm going to because I don't like it. Yes. It already looks bad to me. It looks like it could be a problem. So I'm going to eliminate the problem. Yes. Hey, Bree, let me um, call you back. I'm going to work. All right. Okay. All yeah. right. Did you get your other businesses closed down or other business closed down? Or well, I'm in the process of it still. I got a month left. Mm -hmm. So, uh,. We're making a transformation. Now I gotta bring some of my cutters out. I got a hundred uh, sweatshirts I gotta knock out. What kind of, what are you knocking out? Like thermal foam? Um, well, they're all white, yeah, pretty much. Sublimation? Gonna, no, not sublimation, but like white vinyl, HDV. So I was gonna cut it all out, but uh, we might be end up doing this. We might, maybe this will this. cut vinyl too. This will do all, all you do over there is just put cut only. Okay. And, and then it'll, do, it'll cut, cut it vinyl, out. yeah. You can cut vinyl all day long with this. This yeah. one will cut vinyl good too, uh, but it needs a little bit of help. It needs a tune. Gotcha. Hello? Yeah, not the one in Canton. I'm in uh, Mass. YouTube, it's your boy Mike T's back at you with another video. And what we're getting ready to do right now is make some stickers. Yeah, some stickers with that rolling versa. Uh, remember you guys, I told you I was gonna keep you abreast. I was gonna keep you up to date every step of the way as I learn these different machines here at the Spirit of Start. So if you're ready, like you didn't already see the B-roll. Let's grip. Make sure we got the right one selected. Uh, sneak tip, make sure it's selected, nudge. And that's okay if you got that. Out. Just that's okay. Nudge it back out of the way. Nudge it over and leave it there for a second. And grab the next thing. You're looking for the for the cutout, right? To find out. Yeah, just you don't even have to nudge it all the way. Just just cut it. Now don't move it like that. Okay. To undo. You actually have to undo the little back button is your undo button. That's cool. You can leave it right like that. Okay. Okay. And then what I'm saying is just keep, you know, like, okay, let's say a print that you, oh, you grab, oh, it's still not the, okay, but now there it is. Yes. So, okay, so now you click on it and you say, okay, there, now it's cut contour hairline, right? So not just, yeah. By that line it tells uh -huh, you. Uh -huh. Property bar. And then it's, and then just grab those things and nudge them back into place. Gotcha. Okay, so. so deselect that. And grab those the whichever one you want first, nudge it back. There you go. It lines up perfect. Yeah, but nudge it back over there and then grab the black one and nudge it back. Nudging is there actually just moving it over with the arrow key from left to right. But see you don't have to worry about most people want to grab it and do this, you know. Most people want to grab it and go. Yeah, that's what I started to do. You can't you, the, the, yeah. then you gotta try to figure out how it lines back up again. If you just nudge it, then you don't have to worry about that. Because it does it perfectly. You just put it right back where it was when you're done with it. <laughs> Here's the toilet. Okay, yeah, we can uh, we can nest them a couple of now. We'll All right, and we're getting ready to nest. Okay, we're going back to Versa Works. It's just down here on the bottom. It's in the it's in your taskbar. Go ahead. Okay, and then click on this or just scoot down. Well, now hold on a minute. We want to we want to. Um, Click on the photo covers there. See what, click on that photo covers. Okay, that's that one. Okay, so now you gotta hold on your shift key. Hold on, <laughs> hold on my shift key. Uh, and then select the, uh, select the uh, other one you're gonna nest it with, the one underneath it. Just, don't just select it, don't move it there. You wanna select, there you go, both files, see? Okay. Okay, and then come down here. One of those buttons says nest. Rip, rip, print. Nest. That's it. Now that just put them together. Now go ahead and double click into that menagerie there. On here. Uh huh. Uh huh. You could double click it there, or you could have double clicked it on here. 
Okay, so now it's giving us the same amount, but we don't really want to run that many. Yeah. So click on one of these. Uh, but first of all, get media width. Okay, because we don't know if it's going to be the right media width. Okay, so gotcha. so now click on one of the red ones. Okay. And come over here and tell it we only want eight. So I only want half of those. Okay, and then these little buttons will rearrange for you. So click one of those. See there, put it up wow. the top, okay? okay. So uh, now they're pretty close together. Okay, and can we make another row of these? Uh, well, no, I wouldn't because I think that's enough to print at one time. Gotcha. We could okay. try more if we wanted to, but that Just makes it, you it. know you're doing it good that way. Gotcha, okay. okay. So uh, if you're clicked on the yellow ones, which I think you are. Yeah, they got the Okay, the tell it to be centered, center the media. Up a little bit. There you go, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did, but it didn't. Okay, that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Get me to width one more time. Okay, looks like because these are right on the edge, so. I don't know why they didn't move over, but it's not no big deal. That's fine. Okay. Let's just say that's okay. All right. All right. So uh, we got me width, and uh, go down to the cut. Cut contour or cut controls, and let's make sure the cut controls stayed the same. Okay. That they stayed my defaults that I wanted fifteen one hundred. Yeah. Okay, say okay. Uh huh. And then this is the part before I hit okay. There, I walk over here and make sure that this machine's ready to go. Looks like it's set up there. The brakes off. And yep, it was from before, but we're just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and it's ready to go, so you hit print. All right, so from there we hit print. Which is right beside the nest. And it's gonna rip it first, and then it'll start printing. Okay. So this is a little bit of a longer video than I usually put out and I'm taking my time and learning these steps that's crucial to my next moving steps as far as the print industry goes as far as making stickers banners and a whole bunch of other things that you guys are getting to see firsthand I just want to take this time to say that I'm not going to show the whole uh, sticker video in this one but it will be in the next one so we're actually getting ready to jump to what we actually were doing today Hope you guys enjoy. Please like, hit that thumbs up, subscribe. If this is your first time, browse around. I make content like this all the time. And welcome to the journey as we delve deeper into the print industry. I mean, you can handle this any way you want, but I usually write down like what's, you know, how many I've printed at a time. See, so now I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna do eight more, so I'm putting eight more on here. And you're gonna do how many? For the first time, I'm gonna have to count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay, so you might want to keep track so you don't print way too many more than you want. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. These were pretty simple for the two different things we used. Yeah. But if they were like OB heads or obies that are rod shaved yeah you can you can actually grab things over here let's see can i do it well that mean yeah you can grab things over here and move them around virtually okay but it gives it has that box so nothing could be next to it that it's mm. see if i put two of them here see i can't put i can grab one but i see where it won't let me put it over top of another one Right. Or if it over it interferes even with the outside of the box that's around that one you don't see. It won't let you put it there. But you can move these around. So if you get something that's in weird shapes, you know, you can actually manually stick them where you want to on the page also. But this little button up here will rearrange as much as you, it even flies out for you. Rearrange tiles. Mm. Okay. Or align tiles. These two little buttons up here help you when you're doing things like that. See it arranged it right up there for you in the corner. Yeah. Okay. These are the things you're gonna you're gonna concentrate on knowing Versa works better than anything at the moment because I can do most of the artwork for you, and you can do artwork too. I'm not saying you can't, 
but uh, you all you have to do is worry about how to run this program. And that I will do. Okay, so got the rollers on. I'm gonna roll this back a little bit. Okay. Quick rundown on this machine. Okay. That those little holes are backing. Mm -hmm. They they suck down the material right here in the front seat. Gotcha. This is a heater. It's okay. Not, it's not hot yet. It's just getting warm. You can feel it. Oh. Okay. But it'll get like it'll get hot. <laughs> gotcha. It'll gotcha. get like 100 degrees. All right. Because it kills the dries the ink a little bit, not completely. You can still put a fingerprint in it when you're pulling it off if you're not careful. Mm, you guys got to wear a glove when you're handling the material because. If you get even any finger fingerprint oil on it, it'll, it'll print there. that fingerprint. Yes. <laughs> I've dealt with that a lot with sublimation. Okay. So good. So you're pretty privy about everything. So once you set it up and roll it back where you want it, I usually start it like right where the vacuum is. Then you hit the function key. It says baseline. Yep. Yeah. And when you get that little B, that's your home position. Okay. So even if we pushed, we could push that carrier over here hit base position, it would be over, it would base would start here. Well, only the time you tell it to. Only the time, it okay, gotcha. So, all right. So this machine is set to run. Um, back here, this this is the break for, for, the, for the rollers. Okay. Notice how easy it, it just wanted to like take off and roll on. Yes. Okay, so it's like very tem temperamental. Gotcha. It, it, for the most part, while you while you're always you always leave this off while you're running. Unless unless it wants to unroll on itself. Mm. I've had it I've had it go where the roll like unrolls and you look down on them, it's all it all unrolled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you're like, well, shoot. Because what happens if you leave it on, then th there's too much tension on the roll, and sometimes the paper wants to buckle a little bit in the front when it's printing, and when the head goes across that buckle, it smears. So it has to be off. It either has to be off. Okay. Or you can leave it on, and I have to unroll some. Gotcha. I... I've done it either way, and if you're cutting out things and you're using a big piece of vinyl, okay, the machine's a little bit older, so the weight of of the of the vinyl in the back when you do this, oh, it'll pull messes up the cutout. Yes, yes. So you have to use the the Locking this all the way up. See, you know, this is the great benefit of you guys, of me being able to teach, because I had to, I figured this out all on my own. And, it, and how did I figure it out? It happened to me. Trial and error. So, so normally you want to run it with that off. Now, okay. you want to, like, while you have Lock it. Lock is off position. It's just, be, it's all it does is it just a little weight, because these little, these little things spin like nobody's business. They're, look at it, it's already trying to, or it's already trying to unroll. Look, it's going, this, this, this that's what I was telling you. That's okay. Okay. But if you have a new roll, it could all <laughs> unroll yeah. all the way. Nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Film. Okay. So, our yeah. vinyl cutter, the blade we're using. We use a 45 and a 90 degree angle blade. Okay. Is that 90? Where's my other blade? Oh, it's there. Okay. The way I always worked it was if the blade's not in the thing, it's a 45 degree blade. Okay. If the blade's in the thing, it's a 90 degree blade. The 90 degree blades we use for for um, reflective, uh, laminated thermal film. Okay. Thermal film's kind of gum. Yeah. It's not like vinyl. Gotcha. So if you use a nice 60 degree cutter on it, it cuts better. You can cut everything with one blade, but you'll wear it out real quick. Mmm. So you get the best use out of your blades if you use the the, the nine, the sixty or ninety, sixty. Anyway, one's thicker, one's more. 
I think it's a 60 degree blade. You can, you can see the difference. Let's just get this one out real quick. Oh yeah, to get it out, you unscrew this little screw right here. Okay. And just pull it up out. All right. So it's a little Simple carriage, or it's a little carriage thing. It's, it's magnet inside there. So when you push this out, it helps you get a hold of it. And that's just a little mm -hmm. magnet. Okay. So, okay. so see the thing kind of stays in there on a magnet and see how it spins. Yep. So like whenever the paper has to spin then that, then that cutter can spin around. Let's see. Now we're putting in, or we're comparing I'm, the I'm, I'm showing you how, you can see the difference, can't you? Yes, I can. The this is the 45 yep. and this is the, I think it's a 60. That's a 60. Anyway, this, this is for regular vinyl. This is for the heavy duty stuff. Okay. Now we're getting ready to cut thermal film, so we want to use. For heavy duty? Yeah. And. The 45 degree angle blade for vinyl. For vinyl, okay. And, 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 and like I said, you, you're not going to hurt anything if you do it the other way, but, but you'll wear this blade out real quick doing uh, thermal film. And, the and, and the once the blade head. gets worn pretty good, it doesn't cut thermal film as well. <laughs> mm. So you want a really nice sharp blade for thermal film, so you just kind of stick with the 90 for that. And if you use that for everything, then it gets dull real quick too. So I, that's just how I did it. You could buy a lot of those blades. I think they're a little bit expensive. My wife buys them. I didn't and know what they And how long would you say typically with the way that you do it, the, bla the blade lasts? Well, there's a lot of factors on keeping the blade good for a while, you know, if not, you want to cut deep enough, but not too deep. Yes. <laughs> so like a score or skim cut or goes, kiss cut. They go very long. They're, they're, te they're tempered and they're, all, they're, they're good to go. Make sure you don't put the thing in upside down. I had a ploy that did it once. Put the blade in first and that end doesn't cut anything. Gotcha. <laughs> So, so here we're going. It's going along, and I'm saying, why is the thing cutting? <laughs> and when I finally realized that she had the blade in upside down, I was like, oh, okay. That's why. Stick thinking. it back in that little spot. Make sure you push it all the way down. Yeah. Because if it's even up a little bit, then it messes up the depth. Does it make a snap or a little It doesn't really. Down. So you just kind of put your yeah. finger underneath and push down until that ridge gets all the way even with the whole thing. Gotcha. It's like my other cutter. Oh, yeah. So you got cutter. You're good. Yeah. You know what it is. Four cutter. Five well, cutter. they should all have the same system. Yes. You just unscrew this, pull that out, and then change your blade, and then you just push it back in. Make sure it's, you know, even all the way around. Like, if it's up there like that, you're going to have problems. See? Yeah. It won't, it, won't, it won't be where it's supposed to be. So, so make sure you down. push it all the way. I already put my finger under it and push down. Lock and then you just, just got to snug that. You don't have to crank it to... Jesus. <laughs> okay, so we got our lock off. Lock off. Let's see, we didn't send it yet, but that's this is my, this is my first rule. Okay. First of all, I get everything, I send it, and then I come over here and make sure everything's ready to go. Because a lot of you get in the habit of doing, you'll be all ready to go and you'll say print. And you come over here and you go, oh, I didn't have it rolled back, or I didn't have this, or I didn't right. that. So yep. you always want to say print first, come over here and make sure it's ready to go, and then come back over here and hit the print button. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So, we, this is as far as we got. So, we got it saved, because the save is, is grayed out. So now I'm gonna select what I wanna send. I like to make sure I have it all, so I just up and down just to make sure it's all there. Okay. And then these are our export and import buttons. Now, I mean, you're probably not going to export to much of anything else, but when you do, like right now, it's the default. It goes right to input A on VersaWorks. Mm, automatically. Yeah, because it's already, that's, it'll go there as long as you keep going there. Gotcha. The next time you go somewhere else, it'll then you'll there. have to go back here again. Okay. But the input A should show up over here on this line. Okay. If it doesn't show up anywhere... You, you can find it by coming down into the program, you know, local C and then the program files and then VersaWorks, and then it's, there's, there's input A and input B. But anyway, don't, 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 you wanna have All right. to, all right, and it's already set up to go there as an EPS. Yep, automatically. 
that's how it will, since it'll go that way every time you do since, you since we are already there. And, okay. and I like my RGB color, sounds good. All that usually stays the same. Okay. Unless we're gonna send it as a grayscale, then we have to change it to grayscale, but we're not, so. Okay, and then, so that's that. That's all. So when I get the stuff, send it to you, you just take this and do what I just did. And that's it. Import it to, to, to VersaWorks A, and then when you open up VersaWorks A, it'll take a couple minutes to import in, but it imports in. So there it is. Okay. So you double click on it. Brings okay. you up your little, uh, what do they call this thing? Oh, nice. Little there. stop. Job setup. This is the job setup. Okay, so the very, so just kind of follow down this list as we do things. That way it keeps you in line. All right. So the very first thing you want to do is get your media width. So when you click that, it tells that, that machine tells this what size that is. Oh, okay. Okay. So that piece of material is, is 18 inches. Okay. That's in the machine. So it puts it right in the middle, or it puts it right on the edge. I usually don't like wasted space, but we don't have anything else to put there right now. A lot of times, if I'm doing uh, fair plays, I might take some extra, because sometimes they'll, they, I just build up a case for them because they come and get a heat pressed on. Yeah. So I just print extra ones. So I, I, But since we don't have, don't want to do the extra space, I'm going to tell it to just put that in the center. Okay. Good enough, right? Yep. Taking up about the least amount I can. Yep. Okay, so got my media width. That's your first thing you do. The quality, quality is where you pick up uh, what what you're putting it to. Okay. okay, so so media type. So the type of media we're going to use is a garment heat transfer. Yep. You probably really good with garment with a media, media type then. Yep. Um, if it if it if with the type of material you're not doesn't isn't listed here, just. Just check out one of these generic vinyl A ones or twos, okay. or banner ones or two generics. Okay. One of them will have the settings you need for whatever you're working with. Gotcha. So, um, but anyway, if we know what it is, we'll go to garment heat transfer, because that way it'll put down the right amount of ink for whatever material you're using. Okay. 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 So, uh, color adjustments not usually necessary. Sometimes the printer likes to print a little bit more magenta than normal so once in a while when i'm doing photographs i'll i'll just knock out a little bit of magenta mm -hmm. it looks a little green there but it ain't gonna come out that color okay gotcha so it controls ultimately how much ink is being laid down regardless. i suppose yes um this is this button you hardly ever mess with only if you're doing photographs okay other everything else you don't have to worry about the color it's already colored and corel draw color did, did it for you but we're just going to knock out some color because I know the machine likes to print a little more red. And I already see some red in his face, so I just knocked it out. I just knocked out a little bit. Okay, so anyway, file format. Then this, here's your ants. See, now you see they're going all the way around. Yep. Now, I don't know. See, down here, it might not cut them out right there. Do I see the lance right there? I do see the lance right there. Yeah, there's ants. Okay. I should have probably put a box around this, though. Okay, so you can control. So I would ants. have enough to see all the see ants. the ants yeah. because it's going to be a bitch if you start to weed this out, and then and these are, these tabs are stuck oh, all the way yeah. across the top of the yeah. bottom. Yeah, 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 that's true. Now, if we were going to print this, this is this is this is thermal foam, so we wouldn't laminate this. Right. But if we were going to laminate something, we put these crop marks on it, on the on the mark part. We will put crop marks on it. It'll print okay. these little marks. Yeah four little dots all the way around it that so that the machine can find those dots after we're really? done laminating it put it back in and it finds those dots mm. so but we don't need them so we're not going to do them but that's what that little box is gotcha. and all you know okay so and anyway printer controls uh, all of this particular is usually pretty good i don't mess i just let the printer do all of its default stuff i never found a time when i really needed to have more suction or whether i needed more heat or whatever I don't know. I don't know what some of the calibration settings were. I never really took time to learn the whole thing. If you want to, if you want to dwell into it, I get the manuals are over there. Gotcha. You yep. you could probably figure out a lot more about this machine than I knew because I never did pull pick up a manual and learn any of it. <laughs> just <wait. laughs> just, <Dunno>. just yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So all right. So then cut controls. This is an important one. Yeah. But you can see on cut controls, you can either print and cut, print only, or cut only. Yeah. So if we were gonna put it, take it out and laminate it and put it back in and cut it, we'd print only. Okay. Then when we put it back in and cut it out, we cut only. 
But we wouldn't put the register marks on there before. We put the register marks on if we're going to use the cutout. Gotcha. Okay. See, because see, like if I say print only, the cut marks go, the cut lines go away. And if I say cut only, the print goes away. Now, a good point right here to make about this is don't ever delete the file in between yeah. out of out of co-cut or out of VersaWorks because you'll lose your cut out, your outline cut. Can you imagine trying to cut all that with a knife? Whew. Yeah, no. It could be done because I did it. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> only took a couple years. Yeah, it took a while, yeah. <laughs> but I was not losing that print, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so cut controls, okay. I know I'm explaining this a little more than I'll, the next few no, jobs. I, I the next few it. jobs I'm going to go over a little quicker, but, you know, I'm like yeah. just kind of stopping and explaining things right now. Cut controls. After cut controls, really, these are for file managements and clip and tiles, which clip and tiles are okay if, if you wanted to only print part of him. Mm -hmm. You could grab these little corners and pull it up and down, and you could crop it down to only part print part of that if you needed to okay. after the fact or before the fact. I don't never use much of these clip and tiles. I take care of all that in Corel Draw personally. And and I don't really know what I've never actually ever used veritable data, so I don't have no idea what that is either. <laughs> <laughs> when you hit the button it'll say media don't fit the width. Don't fit. Unless it's really small and then it don't care. But if it don't fit or ain't in the right spot, it'll it's, tell you. It'll tell us. All right. Okay, and then quality, of course, is your heat transfer. And you can, you know, uh, standard is usually pretty good. The machine does a great job of printing, so it doesn't need anything. But high quality, see, you only got 720 here on your standard. Mm -hmm. You get up to 1440 DPI. Wow. So it can print something really nice. If you get stuff for the museum, they want it high quality. Gotcha. Okay. Takes a little longer to print. Speaking of which, did you say there's a job for the master? Well, I've been doing them because you're sick. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> Well, I, I promise I'm back. <laughs> and I had to go all the way to New Philly to get the vinyl for it, too. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, then after all of us not finding the disc, as after we get the disc from the other guy and all yeah, that crap, yeah. he yeah. finds the disc Find in the box. The in yeah, I had already had it here. Sheesh. All right, so now, everything, we figured it all out. We, we got our quality, our color. I don't, you don't always have to mess with that. Normally, Normally not but I just know that it prints a little red. And you get photographs, you might want to knock out a little bit of the magenta. Mm -hmm. uh, the file format just shows you if you got enough ants or whatever you're doing to it. Mark is if you're gonna put lamination to it. And the printer controls now, uh, I leave them alone because they're all pretty good. Now, I had set up defaults for this stuff, so I don't know why it's not defaulted now, right, right now. Let me say okay to that real quick. Let's go to the defaults and I'll try to set them back up again. Q, Q setting A. See, there's setting A and setting B. And the way they explained it to me in the beginning was setting A was good for all your vinyls, thermal films, all that. Setting B was good for all your banners and, and uh, canvas materials. Makes sense. It, it, it just, you could reset, you could set different properties for different things. Like right now, and setting A for the vinyls, I'm going to set uh, most of all of your stuff is going to be on semi-gross gray glue. Most of the time you're only printing to this material here. Okay. So I, but you could change that anytime you want, but, but just to default it there. And then the cut controls, I always like to set these to where, I see I did set them, right there they are. I like one pass, of course, if, if you're doing some lamination and you want it two passes to make sure it gets cut through, you can do two passes. You can also tell the material to return to the original spot after it's printed. Mm. That's what we do if we're putting in black and whites with color. I've kind of mentioned that thing to you a couple times. Anyway, these defaults are here. I don't know why they didn't come up over. Okay. These blades are, um, the blades we like to use are, are um, I don't know what the hell. They're the really good ones. At any rate, when you first put a blade in, it usually cuts really well at about 70. Mm. Brand new. So then as you're using the blade, it starts to dull a little bit, so you gotta up your pressure. So right in, and then, so the pressure, okay, the pressure on the blades usually go from like 70 to like 120. After about 120, you probably want to think about changing the blade. Gotcha. But we're at about 100 on this blade. It's cutting out real nice. It was, it's been cutting out nice every, at 100 pressure. But well, we want to change that 120. 
Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just saying when it when it starts not cutting out as well as you'd like it to. Gotcha. And usually after about 120 pressure, you have to start thinking about putting a new blade in, which I have a whole pack of them. Yep, I've seen them over yeah. there earlier. So there's a bunch of blades yet. So anyway, we're running at around 100 pressure right now, and I don't usually let any offsets go. So let me try this again now. I uh, let me see. Go to chop cut controls. See now, I don't know why I didn't change it there, but if it doesn't change it there, then you just have to change it. I like my speed to be around 15. 15. And then the pressure is whatever blade you got right now. 100 seems to be working really well. Yep. There's ways of checking the pressure if you want to. You can run a test and it'll tell yeah, you if it's test cut. over yep. there if you want to do all that. But right now we're just going this route. Okay, so we're going to do one pass, 15 speed, 100 pressure, print and cut. Perfect. So we're ready to go. So I say, okay, everything I have is ready to go. We're going to hit that print button. But before we do, and I know we already already checked it, but we're going to just do it out of habit. Another check. So walk yeah. over here. Make sure that we're make sure our rollers are where they want them to be because you hate your stuff to roll off one side or the other while you're printing it. Right. Um, if there's any dips or sways in that, it's going to smear. Mm. Has to be absolutely flat. Okay. Sometimes when you put a new roll on, it's got this little dippy thing going on. You either have to roll past that or whatever you got to do because if it's if it's up there, it's going to get smeared. Oh uh, yeah, don't want that. <laughs> so okay, everything looks good. Yep. Uh, we checked. We got our uh, there. We look on the back. Our our, our locks off. Yeah. Okay. Off. So so it ain't going to pull on the material as we're printing it. So everything's ready to go. So then we just come over here and we hit the print button. Now when we hit print, it's gonna rip it first. Okay. It does, the computer does it itself. All right. So the thing about that is if you have several jobs, the, while that's printing them, you could rip as many jobs as you wanted to have them lined mm. up. Yep. If you want to. Awesome. And there's a way of nesting jobs together so that you can run two jobs at the same time with it. So, so you don't waste much space. Oh, okay. This thing usually takes time to even already, yeah. Printer does a really nice job. Is this that the same thermal film that you had before? Yeah. yeah, yeah we'll be ordering. My wife said it printed really good. We'll it did be ordering really a good. lot. We'll be ordering a lot of it here pretty soon. So this is going to print um, and it's going to cut for us. So this is the same way essentially with stickers then I'm assuming. This just same way. different film. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty much, yeah. Now this isn't like 50 ways. This is the only way. You export it to there. Okay. You set up the sheet you got. Yeah. You tell it the type of material you have. Gotcha. And you say print. Oh. Is something wrong with them? Right. <laughs> you guys, well, you guys are going to do it from now on. Sorry about that. No, he just said he didn't talk about it. He just them off. Well, unfortunately, when you farm out some of it, that's what you have to put uh, up with. Absolutely. There was your one thermal foams that we did and pressed on for sure. Wow. That's this stuff right here. It's <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, too bad the screen printing wasn't as good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was at the mercy. So. This thing does a really nice job of food. Yeah, see. It does. So we're gonna let this print and then we'll come right back and get that cut action. That's so it's self cleaning. Yeah. There's probably a lot of uh, online. Oh, uh, there I. <laughs> <laughs> Except the last pass right now, isn't it? Oh, pretty soon. It seems to do like, it seems to have like, like about an inch of a pattern because you'll see it spray down some then it goes back over the same dots yeah to make different colors is what i'm looking thinking about because it doesn't do this doesn't just do if it's one shot right it throws down a bunch of dots several passes yeah watch it's gonna cut that no. out who that is no nah, who is that I, I don't know i have it the slightest idea somebody that uh that's my uncle Jim Bob. Yeah, Somebody that uh, <laughs> that is crazy. 
just getting ready to cut out. Really? Yeah. Give it a second, here guys. You should have probably upped that to like 120 on that time. And I'm gonna up that to 120. So I pause the machine, and then I'm gonna go to cut config, force. Oh, it looks like it says it wants to do 90. I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna make it 120 just because I wanted to cut that sucker out. So enter that, go back to function, take the pause key. Now, if you went too deep and it's cutting through the material, you're in trouble. <laughs> we, would, we would hear it too, wouldn't it? Uh, we're making a sound, wouldn't it? Like it's cutting into the actual... You'd probably hear it, yeah. Yeah. But what it would be doing is cutting it so far that the paper wouldn't hold together anymore. It yeah. only, it's only run by two rollers. So once the paper starts letting oh, loose, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be all over the place. <laughs> it's going to be waving high. Yeah. <laughs> If that happens, you might as well just stop it. If you don't want it to ruin, you might as well stop it and try to cut it out the rest of my hand if you want to keep it. And if you think it ain't worth it, then you throw it in the trash and start over. <laughs> Some projects I had didn't want to throw in the trash, but it was going to be more profitable to throw it in the trash and try to cut it out. Yeah. For sure. But see, the way I got, the way I do these. That's pretty much my standard for getting a cutout on about anything I do. Okay. Sometimes you can't get away with it though. Sometimes when you change it to a black and white, you get too much noise around that. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, sorry. That, and then you don't get a good trace. Yeah. So there's other ways of getting things like that. Way. But, but you wouldn't have to worry about a lot of that. If you got to a spot where you don't know what you're doing, you just you just send it back to me and say, hey, this is what it needs to be. And I say, okay, bam, bam, there you go. Dude, try that. Gotcha. So we work together on it, so you don't ever have to be stuck on any artwork. And I appreciate that. I greatly <laughs> appreciate that. You won't have to be stuck on any artwork. All right. All right. So it's printed and it's cutting. Now it's still going to be wet, so you don't want to like go press it on right away. Yeah. Let it dry a little bit. Let it dry. Now I take things back. See, this is your cut line right here, where that little plastic line is. You know, yep. These cutters. Yep. So I take this back to that cut line. And the way I figure that is right there's about the last cut I did, right? So take yeah. it back to that cut line. Come on, let's go. Mine's getting a little tricky on here. Come on, do it. Let's go. So after it was said and done, this is what it printed um, on that long inversing cam, and it did a printing cut. Now we're having an issue with one of the main buttons. So, it looks like we may be having to come back on another day so we can do things like this. As you can see, they printed on the perforated right here. Definitely a plus. Cleaner version of it. And this is for some of those windows that you see in some of the stores where you can see out um, if you're inside the building, but they cannot see in. And this goes on windows. But yeah, this came out pretty fragrant. So that was a crash course, one of many, um, with Mike. Shout out once again to Mike. Shout out to DJ at Spirit of Start. And we will be learning, like I said, every piece of machinery in here. Now, I was out for a couple of days, so I didn't get to see the shear in action, which is back there. But I still will be getting it. And I didn't get to see the laminator in action, which we will definitely be getting it. So... Yo, time to go find the black shirt to put this on. Right here, what you guys have seen was printed. And, you know, break the sky with your creativity. Don't let nobody get in the way of what makes you you. What makes you wonderful, your wonderful, kind, unique self. And, uh, hold on, so we can get full scope. See Rick in there, master screen printer. Getting busy with it. Yes, sir. Super busy. <laughs> and we're back in here. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for uh, what? This is the first version of this oh. lesson. 
So we will be back at you guys with another video. But right now, I'm calling this one an end. We're gonna press this in. If you follow me on any of my social medias, you will be able to see an updated version. Until next time, peace.